Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Now after the last tutorial um, I thought I would do something a little bit different um, and can you believe it I actually have a second tutorial out already it's like what's what's going on with John but I do and today we are playing with ginseng uh, or buntal or whatever this may be called I'm not too sure um, I actually have not used this before um, I did buy this a couple of weeks ago and I've kind of played with it a little um, not too much though um, and yeah if you want to see how, what we can make with this oh, beautiful I mean it's a gorgeous color as well isn't it nice peach um, then keep on watching So as you can see, what I've already started doing is making a base. Now to do this, I have, I mean, that's really nice, isn't it? Um, been using Biot's. So just regular Biot feathers. And I got a button base from Peterson's Millinery, as well as a pack of their Biot feathers, which has got like loads of different colors. Um, in the same, same shade range so you know they, they go together automatically and pretty much what I've been doing is just laying them down in strips so I mean I've pretty much finished with what I was wanting to do with this anyway but I will, I will add one more on the other, this camera here, so you can actually see what I'm doing. So, um, to start with, it's a little bit tricky. You've got to kind of glue the middle and like let that dry and then, then, it, then it starts working. So, um, what I do is I position it. So make sure, making sure all the, 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 the going the same way is, and cut it where it's too much so that still kind of fits with that look there and then just taking some high tack glue um, which is actually quite strong. Um, I'm applying some glue down. And don't worry, because this does dry clear. Obviously, you don't want to put too much uh, glue down, but you know you want enough so then it will stick. And just just glue the feathers down. Because this comes in half a metres. So I fold it in half, find in the centre. Try not to release too much of them. It's just cutting that in half. Now, the girls in Petersham's where I got this from did advise me to put sellotape on the edge when cutting. However, I can't find the sellotape. So we're going to have to just not use that. So now along this edge here, what we want to do is using that same glue, that high tack glue, and you want some, what have I done with them? Where have they gone? But as you can see, this edge was the edge that we got from Peterson's uh, and it's got sellotape on. But this edge here, which hopefully you can see on camera, yep. What we're going to do is we're just going to glue it down. Now, I don't know if this is the correct way of doing it. I haven't done any research at all, um, but I don't think we would need to glue it a lot. 
just just a dot every now and then just to hold that edge into place can't really s this is going to be a bit tricky to so you could bind the edges i suppose and then where where because you can see the glue coming through so what we'll do is just put an extra bit of glue on where them glue dots are and some more here and then using bulldog clips just oh, that will hold into place what we're going to do is we're going to do this for all the edges yeah we're going to do this for all the edges and then we will be back so now what we need to do is so we've done this what i have done is i've sewn the two pieces together uh, just using a little stitch like this and we now need to try and attach this to the piece now it is try not to break it because if you break the strands it will actually be useless so i've been playing around so what i think what i would do is stitch it in sections so for example i would stitch this bit down and then i would stitch this bit down so this bit at the top and then this bit here i mean the thing is just play with it see what happens don't try not to force it too much i mean that looks beautiful um like here this is where my um where my joint is so actually what i may do is so if i I can cover my join with an overlap like this. So my join is underneath here and this can just be put to one side of well one side as much as possible. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew this together at the join here so those two and then i'm going to join it to the piece using very limited stitches so um the, so the piece will look more like this um what i may do is actually attach that together there and just pin it ever so slightly here um, when I say pin, I mean put a few stitches here so then we can actually play with the folds with the pleats and everything here. So it turns out I was not recording that section. Um, damn. But I didn't do anything. All I did was play with some things and I kind of figured out that the best way to work with this is to use the tension. So don't force it to do something it doesn't want to do um if you don't really like the look then you're gonna anything you've stitched and you're gonna have to unstitch um but tension really works well um using it itself to 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 hold that tension so for example this long piece so this this piece here so under here just this section here what that's where the join is so that one piece has come round over and out here and then this is a for some strange reason it seems to be a longer piece but they were both the same size and I don't understand why um, what we're going to do with this is it's very long as you can see is we're going to thread it through this loop here to create now that's with no pins nothing like that um, obviously it's it's going to want to 
go straight again. Um, let's have a look. So let me just pop a pin in there. This is why recording for YouTube is hard work because you don't have the chance to be able to re like have it set in at what you want when you when it's correct. You're gonna make sure your cameras are set up, you're gonna make sure you're recording, which I clearly didn't. Um let's pop you there. Ooh. Ooh ooh ooh. There we go. So that is how I'm going to finish that up. So It is pinned into place. Most places I've still got like thread hanging from the last bit. Uh, so I'm going to pin. I'm going to sew where I've pinned in order. So in order of the loops then it doesn't go anywhere. And then hopefully, hopefully we will be able to take the pins out. And it should should hold because of the tension. You do need to put a fair bit of support stitching in and because this isn't like a fabric. It's actually like I don't actually know what it is. Um, if I can find out what it is, I'll put that on the screen. But. Yeah. So the final step now is to get some of these fronds that we used last time uh, on the base. And what we're just gonna do is we're just gonna put them on the ridges or in a ridge. Not like to the same density you know just out uh, what I was thinking is just put in one here and there so like before just put part of it down because, because some of them are quite straight so what I would do is um, um, glue a bit of it down just into place, leave it to dry and just finish off that last bit. So you don't want to put too many, you just want to put them like, you know, hiding in the, hiding in the creases, in the folds. So last night was um, long. Uh, for those of you that watched my previous video, the mustard and the purple piece, you probably realise I made these at the same time. Um, I was filming two different tutorials in one sitting. So um, yes, I'm in the same outfit as I was when I finished the last video. But this piece is done. Now, I finally settled on this turban style looking. Um, if you turn it around you can actually still see the base here with all the feather work if you look you can see the feather here I've added more feathers just ooh, just like here and just along here just so then um, it picks up that feather work in the piece there um, if I just pop that here you can actually see it in its, all its glory and I mean, the back just looks just as nice as as the front, and that's that's the sign of uh, you know, it, in my eyes, that's the sign of a good hat. It needs to look good from all angles. So, I don't watch tutorials. I don't really um, go to classes or anything like that. I t I like to figure things out on my own, and I I mean, I'm hoping to take some classes with uh, some millioners soon. Uh, but 
I think to say I've never used this material before, it took me a while. It took me a while to figure out how it needs to, how it plays, how it, how it wants to work. Cinema, you can really manipulate it too much however you want. Um, whereas this, it kind of tells you what it wants to do. So that's one thing I will take from this is, is you can start it off and it's like, I want it to do this. And then it will tell you what it wants to do. So just allow it to do what it wants to do. Second, um, tension. Use the t use its own tension. So like I say, when we've wrapped this piece round and then through, un so this piece comes through under, out here and around, let it, let it use its own tension to support itself. Um, that means less stitches and more, dr more dramatic. So if you liked this video, um, give it a thumbs up, like, comment and subscribe down below. All the materials will be listed as per usual and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.